I have been using the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 since 2018 and recently got the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I have intended to use the device as my primary while still keeping my 2.5 years old Note 8 as my secondary device. But I have often met with difficulties that were simply never there while I was using the Galaxy Note 8. So I thought I should make a video on the things that I could do on the Galaxy Note 8 for 3 years that was still missing on the latest iPhone even in 2020. Before going into details of how these two phones are different, let's get the most obvious difference out of the way. The Galaxy Note 8 has a Snapdragon 835 processor based on the 10 nanometer fabrication process. Meanwhile, the iPhone 11 Pro Max comes with Apple's 7 nanometer plus 813 chipset, which means the iPhone 11 Pro Max is not only powerful than the Galaxy Note 8, it is also more energy efficient. It also has a much bigger battery capacity compared to the Galaxy Note 8. There is another fact, which is that the Galaxy Note 8 is almost 3 years old. Batteries degrade over time whether you are using the device or just bought a new one off the shelves. So without a doubt, the iPhone 11 Pro Max will be able to support you for a whole day. Another way, the iPhone 11 Pro Max beats the Galaxy Note 8 is with its camera. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is equipped with a triple camera array compared to Galaxy Note 8's dual camera. However, if you consider the camera quality, the Note 8 is still capable of capturing quite good pictures. The front camera takes quite good quality pictures at night time. Apps are much snappier and load faster on the iPhone 11 Pro Max compared to the Galaxy Note 8, which is expected. But the real difference comes to the actual day-to-day -day use case scenarios and features. The first real difference you'll notice is on handling the phones. But when it comes to handling both phones, the Galaxy Note 8 feels much comfortable to handle. Part of the reason I think due to the fact that the iPhone is wider than the Galaxy Note 8, which is why it is easier to reach every corner on the Galaxy Note 8 even though the iPhone 11 Pro Max is shorter and thinner compared to the Note 8. This iPhone is also heavier than the Note 8. Now, Note 8 isn't particularly a lightweight device, however, it's less than 200 grams meaning it is still easy on your wrist. But the difference of experience doesn't just end there. From unlocking the device to using it regularly, you'll find it things that are not so 2020. For example, while unlocking the device, the iPhone 11 can't unlock with the face mask on. So I have to type the 6 digit code every time when I'm out. But with Galaxy Note 8, you also have a rear mounted fingerprint sensor which may take some time but it is still faster than unlocking the device with the pin. Then comes the notch on the iPhone 11. I mean, it's 2020 and the notch on the display is so 2017. Admittedly, the Galaxy Note 8 has a top and bottom bezel but it has very minimal side bezel, mostly contributed by the curved display. In contrast, iPhone 11 Pro Max has more bezels on the side. Overall, the display on the iPhone is really good, but it is not 2020 good, where we have very minimal side bezel and the notch is gone. This is an issue with Apple, they don't bring drastic changes every year. Instead, they make little changes here and there, and once they settle with the design, they continue that design even if consumers are not happy with the design. But with Samsung and other phone manufacturers, they try to make changes on the appearance of their devices every year. And if anything on the design is not approved by the consumer, then they are quick to change that. There are other differences as well, which is mostly contributed by the platform these two devices run on. Android and iOS are two different mature OS with lots of features on them. But Android is an open source OS and has lots of customizable features on it. Where yes, iOS is not so big on letting users customize much. On Android, you can customize everything from your home screen wallpaper, icon layout, adding widgets, and many more. Where yes, on iOS, the only customization you can make on the home screen is to change the wallpaper and rearrange the icons a little bit. Android also has an app drawer where you'll find all the apps installed on your device. Where yes, on iOS, Installed apps are arranged pages after pages and you have to swipe, swipe and swipe away to find out the app that you are looking for. Which can be time consuming and frustrating as well. 
Android also had widgets for more than a decade now. Widgets allow you to learn important information at a glance. On Android, you can set up widgets at any size and put on any pages. While widgets on iOS are on today view, which is not very convenient as you have to swipe right every time to look at them. Although with iOS 14, Apple is going to bring some changes in home screen customization, but from the beta preview, we can see those changes are still very iOS-like. For example, you can't just drag an icon or put it anywhere on the home screen, the icon will automatically fill up empty spaces on the left. The same goes for the widgets as well. To set a widget on the right, you have to fill up the empty spaces on the left. However, that's not the end. Android has better multitasking support with split screen and picture-in-picture -picture mode. With picture-in-picture -picture mode, you can play a video on top of, let's say, Notes app to take note. With a split screen feature, you can run two apps simultaneously by sharing the screen space between them. On iOS, you do not have that kind of option. Although Apple has decided picture-in-picture -picture mode on the upcoming iOS 14, which will give some multitasking capability, but it won't be something like what you can get on the Galaxy Note 8 or any other Android device for that matter. On Android, users have the freedom to set default apps for every type of file, but that isn't available on iOS. Which can be frustrating. I have no complaint against Safari on iOS, but I love Chrome more. For document viewing, I love Microsoft Word, but I can set them as default like I can do on my 3-year-old Note 8, which really hinders my productivity, as I can't just click on a file and the file opens on the app of my preference. Now on iOS 14, Apple is going to let users set default apps, but that is only going to be allowed for browser and email app. Now being an Android user, I'm not too excited about it. But I hope Apple opens up more to users to set their own preferred default apps. But that's not all. Our smartphones are getting bigger and bigger in size every year. As I have mentioned at the beginning of my video, iPhone 11 Pro Max is quite a big device. So I have been struggling while navigating through the apps. Part of the apps had navigation gestures, but this wasn't universal for all the apps through iOS, like it is on Android. So often, I had to use both hands to navigate through apps, which in my opinion is a huge hindrance and really affected my productivity. If I go on, there are more things like the S Pen stylus on the Note 8, always on display and so on. But I hope you already got the point that I am trying to make here. However, my overall opinion on the iPhone 11 Pro Max is that it's a great device, but if you want to get more things done and be productive through your smartphone, then iPhone is behind the Note 8 in overall user experience. No doubt that the iPhone 11 Pro Max is faster and the apps are much snappier, but my two and a half year old Note 8 also runs the same app and the same games that the iPhone 11 runs. iPhone 11 Pro Max is an $1100 phone while you can find the Galaxy Note 8 on eBay at around $300. Although getting the Galaxy Note 8 would mean you won't get the official warranty anymore and Samsung has stopped giving feature updates to that device, however, at $300, it is still quite good and you can do more things on the Galaxy Note 8 than your iPhone 11 Pro Max. So that sums up our video for today. If you like this video, then hit the like and share with your friends. Comment below to let us know your thoughts. Consider subscribing to this channel if you want to see more videos from us and press the bell icon to get notified for our next video.